Welcome to Play Connect. I'm your host, Craig Sullivan. And yes, I am not in the studio today. I've been attending a conference up in Los Angeles, and uh, we've got a great program for you. You know, we've got two of the very best in the industry. We've got Brian Quinn and we've got Phil Q uh, from Sinesta. So let's get into it and have them join the conversation now. Brian, Thanks, Phil, how are you guys? Doing great. Great to see you. Doing well, buddy. Thanks for having us. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure. Hey, Brian, let's start with you for the one or two people that may not know you guys, uh, why don't you tell our audience about yourself and your position at Sinesta, and then Phil, same thing for you. Absolutely. Thank you, Craig, and thank you for extending the invitation to Phil and I and to, and to Sinesta. Look, the hospitality business, the hotel business is my life. I started out as a bellman when I was 17 years old, and uh, either you fall in love with it or you don't, and I fell in love with it and um, did ops for about 10 years, and under the tutelage of Phil Hugh, moved over to development and uh, learned uh, real estate and finance and had a great run at uh, some of what are now my friendly competitors. And that brought me to this incredible opportunity at Sinesta to lead the team and be the chief development officer. I know these assets very well. Um, a lot of them came from uh, two of our now competitors, but I worked for one of the two at one point and and really had good visibility insight into those assets and then also did a stint as the chief franchise officer at Red Lion. So our 1,200 hotels and, and 100,000 rooms and 17 brands, uh, I feel like uh, all my children have come home and uh, I had to get a bigger house. But uh, uh, I'm excited to be here, uh, but really excited to talk through with you the fact that we launched three brands at Alice, um, Sinesta Essential to be a direct competitor to uh, uh, Holiday Inn Express, Hampton, La Quinta, Fairfield, and uh, so excited to bring Phil and his team into the group to help with the lifestyle luxury space. Uh, we have the Royal Sinesta brand that we activated the franchise offering and the management contract offering in January, uh, and the James brand. Um, when we did the acquisition in New York of the four assets, with the Denahan Group, we um, were able to pick up the IP for the James brand, wow. which has a great, great history. Um, you know, it was one of the leaders in the boutique and lifestyle space. And um, Phil and I were able to have a conversation in January out at the Alice Conference. And he's got an incredible network in that space. He knows how to work the complex deals. And uh, we're excited to to uh, come together again as a team and uh, and. Uh, work to grow the Sinesta business. So really exciting times uh, at the enterprise. I love it. It's exciting. And, and you know what? I think the over and under in Vegas on Phil coming back to franchise was one year. Now, <laughs> Phil, were you, were you actually out of franchise sales for a year or was it less? I and mean, why don't you tell the audience about yourself? Well, I think it was maybe six months and uh, I thought it would be much longer. I, I look at Brian's career and I say to myself, it's, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Our careers are have been right beside each other. We've been great friends for over 30 years, uh, friendly competitors occasionally, <laughs> uh, more advisors to each other in our careers of, you know, what's next and how do we, what's what's right for and the next step. And back in 20, when I moved uh, into Tampa, I'm only about, as a crow flies, <laughs> probably a mile and a half from Brian's house. But Luckily for my wife, that we're, there's a lake between us. So <laughs> get to, you know, we have to plan our getaways. Uh, so it's um, it's awesome. He's my neighbor. He's my good friend. And when we sat down in January, it's like, man, this just makes sense. I was, uh, as you know, doing, doing a lot of things since, um, you know, uh, August. And when Brian said they were launching the uh, luxury and lifestyle division with, with the James and Royal, it just made sense. Coffee turned into a cocktail, and by the time we left LA, we were we were like, "Wow, this could really work, and we could have a hell of a lot of fun doing it." And what's better than bringing you know his database and mine together to to really grow yeah. this? And thanks to people like you, we're we're able to tell the story, and it's it's an exciting one. Yeah, you know, you know what I and, think. And, think about. Oh, sorry, Craig. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, please, Brian. I was going to say, and then the, the other two sort of call outs is, you know, John Murray, our CEO, created 
you know, our opportunity here by buying all the assets, you know, the last sort of decade and a half and uh, to have him in our, as our CEO is incredible. And you think about Phil's network, John's network, and then our president, Keith Pierce, um, you know, did decades at one of our competitors and just, you know, a master of the mid scale and, and economy space and also bringing incredible relationships. Phil likes to say between the four of us, there's not anybody we don't know uh, in the development community. So, uh, you know, a lot of different skill sets, a lot of complementary skill sets, but to be able to have expertise in acquisition and management and funding deals and franchising and economy to luxury, you just don't see that, you know, across three or four executives usually. So uh, we think we've uh, we've got something special here. Yeah, yeah Craig, it's- You um, absolutely do. Absolutely. Three o'clock. Three o'clock on Friday, I send an email um, because you know Tom Williams on our on our on my team said, "Hey, I'd like to get with these guys." I'm like, "I don't know them." I sent an email. Within 15 minutes, Brian had a meeting scheduled with the president, the head of development, for Monday at 11:30, and he calls me Sunday and says, "Why are we meeting with these guys?" I'm like, "I got a plan. Let's just get on the phone." But you know, if we <laughs> one email nice. later, you know, we're we're on we're on with them. So it's uh, it's 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 a fast pace over here you know and that's and that's great you're right you know the 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 complimentary set that you each bring and the expertise is second to none and i mean you know senesta since its inception has just had phenomenal growth um record-setting growth um but you know the thing that i really like is the friendship and the ability no matter what day or time you guys can pick up a phone and go hey you know what there's something going on here and i need your help or you know do you need some help with this and you know it's just that camaraderie and that friendship and trust i think that really comes through not only you know with you guys but with your owners and your prospective new franchisees that you know put you guys, you know, a step ahead of, of, of everybody else. So let's talk about your, your, your lifestyle brands. Um, let's start with the James and, and work our progression through all of them. And, 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 and tell me the story in the audience, the story of the James and, you know, how it came to be and now franchising it and what markets you're looking at, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the top of the mask there and then to kick it to Phil. But, you know, this is the beauty of being part of a $35, $40 billion CRE, right? RMR, a parent company, um, through one of its affiliates and across its business, uh, was working to get the Sinesta brands into New York. And we acquired four hotels, the Benjamin, the Shelbourne, the 5050, and the Gardens. And those four products allowed us to be in New York with a Royal Sinesta, a Sinesta, a Sinesta Select and a um, Sinesta ES. As that transaction happened, first of all, the fact that we're a, we're acquiring hotels, we manage hotels, we own hotels, I think is a point of difference as many of our competitors have gone to an asset light model. But on top of that, that we're always looking for additional opportunities for the broader business. And as that negotiation evolved, one of the opportunities was to pick up the IP for James. Um, the Denahan Group had the James brand for some time. Uh, as the industry knows, the James brand was out early and often in the lifestyle and boutique space. But, you know, as Phil and I have learned, it is hard to build a brand, create a brand, sustain a brand, and grow a brand. That, those are uh, those are skills that you uh, you need a platform for. You need the right executives. Uh, you need the right um, tactics and, and strategies. And you need money. Uh, and thankfully, as that real estate transaction happened, again, that's what's so unique about us. That if, but for that real estate transaction, we never would have ended up with the James brand as an, and then to aggressively uh, accelerate it to uh, to a franchise, you know, a franchise model. You know, the James brand is going to inhabit the neighborhoods in which the hotels sit. Uh, is going to be beverage forward. You know, and, you know, why are these things happening? The boutique space, the lifestyle space has been around for a while. You know, it was, it was on a tear before COVID. It has come back, roaring back. You know, what's interesting is I think the capital markets, the finance folks, the real estate folks, the debt recognizes that lifestyle and luxury space is a space that the consumer wants. They're willing to pay more money for and there's margin there and there is 
less risk than perceived in the past. And it's on everybody's, uh, you know, on everybody's tongue. And to pick up a brand that already had history, that already had a lot of the uh, uh, DNA built out was incredible. We have, we're, we're modernizing it. We're going to plug it into the Sinesta system. You know, I don't want to steal all of, all of Phil's thunder, but one other element that we bring is we own assets. So we are going to bring um, an asset that we have in Washington, D.C. into the James brand very quickly and one in Chicago. Those are just moves you can't make if you're a franchise only shop. And the other thing is we had the faith in someone like Phil to offer franchising in Royal and James, right? It, it's a little, um, it's it's a growth business, but you have to pick your partners very, very carefully to make sure that they deliver on the yeah. uh, soft power of, uh, of uh, boutique brands. But Phil's uh, toured the country and toured some of the hotels, and I'll let him opine on James a little bit as well. Yeah, um, yeah thanks, please, Brian. Phil, let's hear your, your thoughts on the James and the Royal. Well, I'm, I'm educating myself because, Craig, this is my third brand I've been on your show with over the last um, 12, 13 years. And what has been most important about a franchise organization is the relationships, not only with the counterparts you work with, but with its franchisees. And when I sat down with Brian, his tagline is fast, friendly, and flexible. Uh, get quick answers to our franchisees, be nice about it uh, from start to finish, and be flexible. And what I've seen so far, um, the flexibility is what is the real point of difference with Sinesta. Brian saying earlier that we're going to take an asset in Chicago, an asset in, in D.C. and convert them to James. It's just it, it's going to jumpstart that brand and it gives confidence to owners that have assets in it that are worth in excess of 100 million um, willing to renovate and join what I'll call is a, an 80 year old startup. The Sinesta has been around for 80 years and uh, it's now jumped over the last 24 months to, to over 13 or 1300 hotels as Brian stated. So it's got a huge history. It's got ownership that is very flexible in deal terms, in creativity. Uh, Brian and I presented a, a couple opportunities already to our different committees and, and they came back with even more flexible and creative ideas that were very attractive to the owners. So uh, news at 11 about some announcements we'll have with some signings coming up this late spring, but a lot of, a lot of really exciting activities on the resort side, center city um, that we don't want to spoil with, uh, with <laughs> talking about now, but certainly uh, we'll be back on the show come uh, end of Q2 and, and be hopefully bragging a little bit about uh, the owners that trusted us and the assets that are now in the family. So a lot of stuff just coming out. Uh, Absolutely. In short period, we talk. You know, Absolutely. I, I think like, you guys. I think will be there. Yeah. Thanks. Craig. I think on Royal Sinesta, what's exciting too is, you know, that brand was part of the original, you know, family when we acquired it. You know, a lot of people know the asset in Florida, the one in New Orleans, Bermuda before the storm. And um, to be able to bring assets in from, those other relationships from our competitors when the dynamic change with them, you know, we have great Royal. We have a great Royal in San Francisco. We have a great Royal in Portland. We have a great Royal in Seattle. We've got three Royals in Chicago. We've got a Royal in New Orleans and San Juan and Kauai. You know, you think about the um, some of our other uh, counterparts in the industry and what it takes to get a lifestyle and luxury and upper upscale brand going. It is those top 25 markets and stepping out there with strong ADRs and strong rev pars and buying a piece of that space. Well, we have a nice footprint in New York. We have a nice footprint in DC, Chicago, as I mentioned, New Orleans, the West Coast. Um, and, and we have a huge commitment from our parent company and the affiliated companies. Uh, Phil, what are we up to? We're going to spend six, seven, eight hundred million dollars over the next four or five years to renovate all our owned assets a lot of that capital density is going to go nice. into the Royals. So big commitment. Yeah. The release I just saw was 1.2 billion on all of our hotels. Um, it's unheard of. I mean, I've walked the wow. assets. Yeah. Know, so I've been to DC, New York, Chicago, walked all the hotels and I'm like, we're renovating this. I mean, <laughs> it, it, will, it will truly make us the leader in those marketplaces by just taking it to the next level. I'm on my way tonight. Uh, yeah. 
sometime this week to San Francisco to attend a, a huge uh, media release we're doing, a PR event, staying at the Clift, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Sure. And yeah. uh, um, now that I know Brian has a place and uh, spends a lot of time in New Orleans, I'm going to have to get to the back to that's the Royal. A, that's a pretty special. That's a pretty special Royal too. And make sure that you've got to go in the uh, the uh, Redwood Room and have a drink at the Clift. It's special, special, special. Oh yeah, room. that's amazing. That's my favorite hotel in 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 the city. And it's funny, my. Uh, my parent company, when I used to work for Publicly Held, uh, was the special servicer on the note when Morgan's owned it. Oh, wow. And one of my <laughs> clients, Tarsadia Hotels, bought the note, foreclosed on it, and then leased it back to Morgan's. You know, and, and, and that was that was one of those <laughs> deals. It was the gift that kept on giving for me. You know, it was great. And I love staying. I, I haven't seen it since uh, the renovation, but I've heard all about it. Yeah, uh, they did. They I think did. we need to do a uh, click road show and, and show it off to everybody. You know, go yeah. out there for a couple of days and do some filming and, and really do a, a centerpiece on it. But let's talk about Royal and, and the resort. Now, you know, it seems to be a flavor of the month type thing right now. Are, are you looking at any of those being all inclusive resorts or are they already? Is that something that you guys are considering? You know, let me in the audience know what you're, what you're thinking about that. Because that seems to be a big thing right now is, you know, these, these destination resorts going all inclusive. Yeah. I think there's a couple of layers to that, right? As Phil curates his business plan, destination markets have always been on our target list. They will continue wow. to be on our target list because of the, rate potential and the, and the uh, revenue density that comes from those. As it relates to the resorts, we absolutely know we have to complement Kauai, we have to complement San Juan and, and, uh, and St. Martin. Yeah. We do have 15 hotels in Central and South America with GHL, our capital partner. And we went down and reinvigorated yeah. that relationship. And we have some great destination retreat style resorts and oceanfront in that portfolio. Um, Keith Pierce, uh, just came back from Egypt, uh, and uh, we have some good news coming out of that trip too that we'll share in short order. Um, but we've we've got our cruise ship back on the Nile, uh, and we've got uh, t two or three of the assets stood back up too. You know, post COVID, so you know that resort element is in our DNA. We've hired um, Marco Roca uh, to help us in uh, Mexico and the Caribbean, and uh, Marco needs no introduction. Right now. Um, if there is somebody that Phil and I don't know, Marco knows him <laughs> or her, uh, that's for sure. So, yeah. look, I, I think all of that's on the table. I think what's exciting for all inclusive for the industry and and uh, Marco and I will be at Chris and Hole in a couple weeks is um, that all inclusive is moving up into all the segments. Right. If you think about when we probably worked on it in our past lives, it was more of a mid scale upper mid move. And there were a few good right. players. That offered beyond that, but now it's readily accepted in the upscale and upper upscale luxury space. Uh, so we are going to take a piece of that, you know, along the way. I think we have some pretty good locations to earn and burn, um, but that is absolutely going to be part of the uh, the exercise in the states and in Canada. And uh, and we're excited to see some additional production out of GHL and, and Marco. But I'll let uh, Phil opine on the destination markets and some of his approach. Well, I, you know, Craig, it's amazing to me that the desk, you know, I initially when I my if I had to, from the outside looking in, I'm saying, oh, we really have to pursue markets for center city development for Royal. There's going to be great conversion opportunities. Right. Tons of hotels need to renovate uh, as they recover uh, out of COVID. But where we're seeing a, a lot of activity is on the resort side. We've got several projects in Florida that are we've had some meaningful conversations with and and um, look forward to wrapping up uh, those conversations shortly. And as we look across the country, I think Sinesta's Resorts plays, plays very well as a complement to what we're doing from a corporate side in, in buying hotels in center cities. So luckily for me, maybe <laughs> a little more time on the beach and not so much on the street. So <laughs> forward to uh, get this developed. But it's, I like it's, it. It's, it's interesting to see this as you as you kind of say, oh, this is how this is going to play out, and it's got a lot yeah. more, a lot more to it than I, I thought. And as people become more familiar with the Sinesta brand, 
through conversations like this, uh, it, it's 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 going to be an exciting place to play. I mean, you, Craig, right. you could imagine. Yeah, I, you could yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Brian. No, go ahead. No, you, could, you could imagine the through line of talking about renovating Kauai, right? Which is an incredible island. Very yeah. few assets that are there. We have one of the premier locations. Take the through line from you know from an asset like Kauai and think about. Um, St. Martin, where we do have an all-inclusive component already, GHL having uh, waterfront assets in Colombia and Peru and having some destination retreats, Keith going over and reinvigorating the relationship where we have a Nile cruise brand. You know, Sinesta sits in this sort of rarefied air as somebody was that was there when some of the work was done. Book, actually, Phil and I both worked on some of the intercon work and regent work. It feels like that. Sinesta sits in that upscale space and and has a great name and is and is stretchable yeah. up market and down market but i think we are going to fight to get our fair share of the destination resort space and just i think we're already doing a lot in that space that lends it to uh to additional growth guys let's sure. talk about growth so what about california i mean obviously you know you've got san francisco um are you looking in santa barbara are you looking in ventura los angeles orange san diego the inland empire i mean i think those would be all great targets for you guys and you know after all now california is a very complicated state we all know that okay now right. i am the ambassador for california but you know we are the fifth largest global economy and there's some great opportunities in california for you guys I, I can only answer it one way, Brian, right? Yes. <laughs> Good. Good. We are, I mean, those markets are just critical for our success, everyone that you mentioned. And luckily, uh, upon my arrival, Brian has already had uh, a lot of conversations in some of the markets you mentioned. And I think those will continue to play out over the next few months. Craig, there's a lot coming uh, yeah. down, the, down the pipeline right now. So, uh, Looking forward to, like I said, I'm looking forward to the end of June visit with you. Absolutely. Now, now you know, you know, you, 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 you're, you're fair, you're flexible, and you're fast. And I know I got that out of order. Uh, but what do you, what else are you doing to help your new owners come on board? Is there key money? I mean, you know, what are some of the enhancements that you're offering? You know. I did to get somebody on board with you that, you know, frankly would be a hand in glove fit for you. Um, you know, because they've, they've got, they've got something special needs a little bit of help and they're a good owner operator. So how, how's, how, how are you attracting your, your prospective new franchisees? Well, you know, Phil touched on it, you know, fast, flexible and friendly to us is not just a mantra or a bumper sticker or something yeah. we're going to plaster on our paperwork. We believe if, if we've, you know, engaged an owner uh, and we've opened up a dialogue about doing something, we own quick answers, whether it's the PIP or approval or capital, you know, uh, uh, key money approval, uh, franchise approval, management contract approval, um, getting the PIP turned around, getting the license agreement turned around. And that's one way to earn, you know, credibility all along the way. Yeah. I think, being flexible too. Look, um, this is a new business franchising in the United States for Sinesta. They've done it all around the world, but it's new for them in the States. So um, every dollar we, Phil brings in is incremental. So we can just look at it differently, right? We can right. be very creative with our structures. We recognize the hotel PL is under pressure. Um, you know, our franchise disclosure document doesn't look that different from our competitors, but that's probably where it ends. And when the conversations yeah. with Phil's team starts, all that flexibility will show up. So we will curate a specific, uh, unique solution for, you know, if we have an owner that owns 10, uh, you know, golf resorts across the country and is doing okay, but wants to do better, and we right. can put our pipes to work there and our commercial engines to work there and we can help them do better. We want to win and, and share in that upside. Uh, but we also believe maybe potentially we help them with their downside a little bit. Uh, so I think it's not only key money and being creative around fee structures and term and speed and those things. It's really understanding what does the developer need? What does this asset need? And then layer yeah. in layer in the solution 
And because we're new, even I like I like the 80, uh, 85 year old startup, 80 year old startup comment. I love it. But you know, what is yeah. what is the nature of being new? That you can you can try some new things. You can make a few yeah. mistakes. You can do a few uh, uh, off market deals and better than market deals to uh, create new relationships. And and I think the other thing that we can never forget is that SVC, RMR, our affiliated businesses, give us a window and and a skill set in finance and real estate that's unrivaled. Really, no other hotel company has that incredible chassis still connected, directly connected to the business anymore. Well, let, let's talk about the capital stack. You know, we've you know we're expecting a you know quarter point bump from the Fed today, and you know we've had some bank failures. Um, you know, it, it's you know I'm sure you guys have got you know your go-to lenders that are still making loans, which is also going to ingratiate yourselves to, to your new franchisee and getting, getting that, that capital stack put together. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are your feelings about what's going on out there? How is this an advantage for Sinesta in the long run? Because I think it's, it's a tremendous one. I think it, you know, with your expertise, across the board you've got the deepest bench i've seen than any other company so you know i mean you guys have got all the bases covered so i think it's going to be a, a tremendous you know opportunity for you guys to help people with their capital stack and get things done phil phil was working on a capital stack before we got on this call so i will let him yeah. answer this question <laughs> literally well, I, you know, I, I think brian said it eloquently it's about solutions craig it, it's yeah. really about solutions the um They've been franchising in the U.S., as Brian said, since January for the Royal and the James. So every conversation we're having, we're sitting down, like, how can we solve a problem for you, knowing that we've got a very solid brand, that we have aggressive growth goals? And each each one of our conversations, they're only about 45 days old for me now, <laughs> are about how do, we, how do we look at the capital stack differently? Where can we bring our relationships in and, and the overall power of Sinesta? To solve a problem to get it, to get a project done, especially in key locations or resort destinations, um, and that's that's really kind of the meat of what I'm having right now is show me what you got. Let's figure out how we can fix this, and and can we be a solution to you in a multitude of ways that we've already done or ones that we haven't thought yeah. of yet. No, but you, you can imagine I, I you can love. imagine our, our our James franchisee in New York with the James Nomad. Um, you know, had somebody else bought the brand, they don't necessarily have a piece of yeah. real estate in Chicago or New York that they can flip. And we instantly change his perception of the value of the brands overnight because we have that, yeah. you know, lever to pull. Look, I, I think making bold moves is in this company's DNA, right? They were counterintuitive all through COVID. Yeah. It's counterintuitive for, for Phil and I to be back together. That's a dangerous duo to put back together that the industry allowed to have happen. So that's great. Um, but we can make bold moves across the franchise contract. We can make bold moves across the management contract. We can make bold moves across how we treat the commercial engines in your business, right? And, um, yeah. and the other thing is never, ever discount the conversion expertise. What this enterprise went through, taking back hundreds of hotels in days in every segment, luxury, upper upscale, upscale, select serve, extended stay. I mean, it's never been done before. Never been done before. Standing up no. multiple brands, standing up a management company, standing up a franchise organization, standing up the commercial engine. So bring us a brand Bring us a box. We've already converted one, just like it's somewhere in the world already. So uh, we think that's a skill set we're going to bring to the market. Too. I love it. Well, I'm expecting to see you guys not just in Northern California, but in Southern California a lot. <laughs> and you know, keep us in the loop. Say, get me on your press release uh, machine okay. so that I know what's going on. We can put it in in our uh, blog on the website and. You guys have got an open invitation to come back anytime you want. This has been great. So, Brian, do me a favor. Tell the audience how they can get a hold of you. And then, Phil, I'd like you to do the same thing. Tell the audience how they can get a hold of you. Sure. Uh, nice Irish, easy uh, name and the phonics work and everything. So, Brian, B-R-I-A-N. 
My parents fought over the Y. Dot Quinn, Q U I N N, at Sinesta.com. Yeah. Um, similar, I would just tell you uh, go to LinkedIn. My cell phone's on there, my email's on there. Uh, this is one of the first companies I've ever worked with that everyone, uh, from a leadership perspective, has their cell numbers on the on their card and handing them out. So uh, we're easy. We're all over social media and should be easy to find. And uh, look forward to t- if we haven't met yet. Looking forward to meeting you. Yeah, absolutely. And Craig, thank you, thank you for the partnership and um, yeah. our capital partners focused on LA and Miami as the next two uh, sort of corporate. Uh, the capital deployments um, and Phil will uh, Phil will go get us the rest. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can't wait. I am going to be watching and and applauding you every step of the way. Congratulations, guys! You you are in the process of creating something very special within our industry, and I applaud you for that. Thank you. So thank you. All you guys best. have a Take great care. time. We'll we'll talk again soon. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you soon. All right. Talk soon. Have a great day. Hey, what a great episode. You know, Phil Hugh, Brian Quinn, great guys. I love what they're doing over at Sinesta. Give them a call. Um, They're also a sponsor of the California Lodging Investment Conference. So really looking forward to watching their progress and, and hearing what they're doing. And thank you for being with us today. And also, I'd like to thank our friends at Chicago Title National commercial services group you know they're a big part of the show thank you very much and until the next episode remember be kind share your knowledge now go be amazing